Hello my little learners. Today we'll continue from where we left off in part 1. If you have not watched that video yet, I highly recommend you to do that first. It will help you understand this part better. Don't worry, I will put the link to part 1 in the description below. Now let's move ahead and explore more interesting things. Ready? Let's begin. How to group plants? You must have noticed that plants show variation in the features related to stems, leaves, flowers and more. The stems of different plants vary in thickness, height and hardness, while the leaves vary in shape, color, size and arrangement. You might have tried grouping the plants in activity 2.3 using one of these features. You might have also learned in earlier classes that plants can be grouped into herbs, shrubs and trees based on their height and types of stem. Let us study the features of plants in more detail and group them on that basis. So students, plants show many differences in their stems, leaves and flowers. Stems can vary in thickness, height and hardness, while leaves differ in shape, size, color and arrangement. In earlier classes, you learned to group plants as herbs, shrubs and trees based on height and stem type. Now, let's study these features in more detail and group plants accordingly. An activity is given. Let us group. Let us go on a nature walk again for some more interesting observations. Look closely at the height of different plants. Are these plants shorter than you? As tall as you or taller than you? Is the stem brown or green? Touch and feel the stems and try to bend them gently. Can you bend the stem easily or is it stiff? Take care that the stems do not break. Also observe from where the branches of the plants arise, whether they arise close to the ground or higher up on the stem. Fill in your observations in table 2.3. A few examples are already given. So in table 2.3, Grouping of plants has been done based on height and nature of stem. Mango is a tall plant with a hard, thick brown stem. Its branches grow high on the stem. It is a tree. Rose is a medium height plant with a hard, thin brown stem. Its branches grow close to the ground. It is a shrub. Tomato is a short plant with a tender green thin stem. Its branches grow near the ground. It is a herb. So, what differences do you observe among herbs, shrubs and trees? How can you group plants as herbs, shrubs and trees based on the data entered in table 2.3? Look at this picture of mango tree. Some plants grow really tall and have hard, thick, brown and woody stems. Their branches typically start higher up on the stem and away from the ground. These plants are called trees, for example, a mango tree. But some plants are not as tall as trees. These plants often have many brown, woody stems that start branching very close to the ground. These stems are hard but not as thick as the stem of a tree. These plants are called shrubs. For example, a rose plant is a shrub. And some plants are typically small with soft and green stems. These are known as herbs. For example, a tomato plant is a herb. Some plants with weak stems need support to climb and grow and are called climbers. For example, money plant is a climber. 
and some plants creep along the ground and are called creepers for example watermelon is a creeper creepers also have weak stems but they spread on the ground instead of climbing so we can group plants based on height and nature of stem as tree shrub herb climber and creeper trees are tall and strong plants with thick woody stems they live for many years for example mango neem banyan shrubs are medium sized plants with thin woody stems and branches near the base for example rose hibiscus herbs are small plants with soft green tender stems they live for a short time for example tulsi mint climbers have weak stems and need support to climb using tendrils for example money plant grape vine and creepers have very weak stems and spread along the ground for example watermelon pumpkin etc so we have grouped plants based on height and nature of stem now what can be other features on the basis of which you can group plants let us perform another activity activity 2.5 let us compare look at the leaves of different plants collected by you during the nature walk do you notice any variation in the shape and structure of these leaves you may observe thin lines on the leaves of the plants these are veins the patterns of veins on the leaf is called venation what differences do you see in the veins of leaves shown in figure 2.4 a and figure 2.4 b so in some leaves you can observe a net like pattern of veins on both sides of a thick middle vein this pattern is called reticulate venation for example leaves of hibiscus exhibit reticulate venation but in some leaves you may observe that the veins run parallel this pattern is called parallel venation for example the leaves of banana plants and grasses exhibit parallel venation so do you think that plants can be grouped on the basis of venation present in their leaves of course yes plants can be grouped based on the type of venation present in their leaves parallel venation has veins running parallel from base to tip it is found in monocot plants while reticulate venation has net like veins on both sides of the midrib it is found in dicot plants now let us try to explore roots of the plants do all plants have roots are these roots similar let us find out in activity 2.6 visit an open area where wild herbs and grasses are growing you may use small herbs for this exercise using a khurpi carefully dig out a few different herbs without damaging the roots to do this you may wet the soil and loosen it wash the roots with water and observe them after you are done observing make sure to replant the herbs so that they may continue to thrive and grow what are the similarities and differences in the roots of the plants collected by you what differences do you see in the roots of plants shown in figure 2.5 a and figure 2.5 b carefully observe the roots of a mustard plant in figure 2.5 a the roots of this plant consist of one main root and small side roots arising from it the main root is called tap root Another example of a plant having tap roots is hibiscus observed by you in activity 2.1 The plant in figure 2.5b is a common grass plant the roots of this plant appears as a bunch of similar sized thin roots 
arising from the base of the stem such roots are called fibrous roots does your collection include any other grasses what kind of roots do they have so the mustard plant has one main root with side roots called a tap root hibiscus also has a tap root grass has many thin roots of the same size from the stem base called fibrous roots now students what is a tap root and what is a fibrous root so a tap root is a one big main root that goes deep into the soil smaller roots grow from the sides of this big it looks like a thick main root with small branches and what is a fibrous root so a fibrous root has many thin roots of almost the same size these roots come out from the base of the stem it looks like a bunch of hair or thread spread in the soil think of it like a broom with many equal sized sticks so students i hope it's clear now and you have no confusion between tap root and fibrous root let's check your understanding look at this picture and tell me which one is a tap root and which one is a fibrous root here is the answer if your answer is correct great job let's move ahead but if not no worries just go back and watch the explanation again is there any relation between the type of leaf venation and the type of root of the same plant how do we find this out let us relate and analyze in activity 2.7 collect saplings of five common plants from your school nursery or any other nurseries to plant in your school garden examples of such plants can include lemongrass marigold sadabahar and others before planting them observe their roots and the venation in their leaves record your observations in table 2.4 do you observe any relation between the leaf venation and types of root in these plants a sadabahar plant has a tap root and its leaves have reticulate venation do other plants with reticulate venation have tap roots too lemongrass on the other hand has fibrous roots and its leaves have parallel venation do other plants with parallel venation have fibrous roots chickpea is another example of a plant with tap roots and reticulate venation in leaves wheat is an example of a plant with fibrous roots and parallel venation in its leaves so we can conclude that plants with reticulate venation have tap roots while those with parallel venation have fibrous roots so students you have to remember this plant fact and this is the trick remember this plant fact rtpf where r stands for reticulate venation t for tap root p for parallel venation and f for fibrous root so remember this plant fact rtpf is there any relation among the seed of a plant types of root and leaf venation are all seeds similar let's find out in activity 2.8 let us compare soak some chickpea and maize seeds in water for 2 or 3 days remove the seed coat of a chickpea now observe the structure of the chickpea and maize seeds are they similar or different you would notice that chickpea seeds are split into two parts each part is called a cotyledon plants that have seeds with two cotyledons are called dicotyledons or dicots while maize has a single thin cotyledon plants with such seeds are called monocotyledons 
or monocots so what relation do you observe among leaf venation root types and the number of cotyledons in seeds of a plant dicot plants have reticulate venation and a taproot system while monocot plants have parallel venation and a fibrous root system you can remember this by trick code direta or mopa phi direta means dicot plant type reticulate venation and tap root mopa phi means monocot plant type parallel venation and fibrous root let's stop here for today students today we learn how to group plants based on their features in part 3 we will continue this chapter and learn how to group animals till then bye bye